All right, guys. Today, look, we got some people that are trying to put beads and hot passes in, and this is me trying to help you. This is me, like you're my helper, sitting in the passenger seat, and I'm trying to explain to you what to do. Because this would have helped me when I got started. So this is me trying to help you, like Uncle Chris, <laughs> okay? Uh, this is me trying to reach out. And most of you guys, or a lot of you guys, are already like professional badass pipe welders. So you don't have a hair on your ass if you don't get in the comments and try to help these guys, okay? So I'm putting you on the spot. Let's get, look, here's the deal. Before I get started, I'm going to talk about this. Here's the deal. We've got to get people interested in the trades. It doesn't have to be pipe welding. It doesn't have to be, that's what I do, so that's why I'm teaching it. But have you seen Gen Z lately? I mean, the millennials, I'm not going to talk bad about anybody. I'm just saying our future generation is going to have to weld and do things with their hands and not have a degree in underwater basket weaving and other useless things that most people do. So I'm trying to teach people how to put food in their mouth, essentially, okay? This is why I'm passionate about it. This is why I think we're coming back. I think we're coming back to the trades and it's about to get real, it's about to get a little nutty. But people that can do something, actually do something, are gonna be able to put food on the table. So I'm about to teach you how to put a bead in a piece of pipe with a piece of scrap that I found on the ground over there because I got a question from Devin and he's come a long ways, but he's got, he's got a few hangups that we all do. And if you want to send me pictures, send me the pictures of the ugliest part of your weld. I don't care to see the pretty parts. I don't care, couldn't care less. I want to see the problem parts. Hey, I'm having problems here. <clears throat> I'm having problems here, and I'll make a video on it, just like I'm doing for him right now. So look, this is actually, I don't know, I don't know who did this. Uh, I found it over there under the table. I didn't even clean it off. But it had somewhat of a hot pass in it. It looks like a, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Let's see if I can see it in the camera. All right, let's do this. All right. Okay, so let's say this is your bead. That's actually somewhat of a hot pass. That's about, matter of fact, that's about right for a hot pass. Uh, in position. So you want to keep that hot pass. If this is my welding rod, you want to keep it tight. Your, your hot pass should be down here and tight. You're, you're doing this little sometimes stepping. Sometimes I'll just kind of float it in. I'll just kind of drag it, let the rod rest in there and just kind of drag it if it's hot enough. But a lot of times you have to kind of move it a little bit. Just, just keep it tight. Keep it small. Think weld small. Try to remember that. Weld small. Now, so you, on top, you're going to have to start off and you're going to have to kind of step it because you're going to have to fan it out or it'll pile up too much on the top. And you don't want that. You just got to grind it off. So it kind of starts so you, can, so you can flatten it out. And on the side, gravity's going to start taking over. It's going to start to, to kind of come down. So that's when you tighten up and you keep it in there. Just keep it in there. Step it up. You're not trying to fill it up. You're just trying to put a hot pass in it, a legitimate hot pass. And do whatever you got to do on the bottom. And when you get down here on the bottom, when you get down here on the bottom, about right here, you're going to have to make this little step back movement. You're going to, you're going to, on a bigger note, you're going to have to pull away and step it up and kind of, it's, it's kind of like that. It's kind of a, when you're taking these long steps and it's like stack, cool, stop it. Come back, step it, come back. When you get on the bottom, you kind of have to step it, kind of push back. And right before you pull out, take a few steps past it. Get all that, baby. Stack, cool. You know, and you're going to do that all the way. You're not going to stop right here. I had to move it over here because you couldn't see it in the video. So I put it in my vise. <clears throat> Look, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do a bunch of editing. I've got other things I have to do today. But it's important for me to talk about this right now because i got people doing it. <clears throat> so 
like I said, this is a 532. You're going to start off on the top, and you're going to step it. Step it, not to be confused with whipping it. Step it, and a lot of times you'll be able to just kind of float it in, just let it do the work. Just let the rod work. And when you get on the side, there's a good possibility it might want to try to fall off on you. You know, you got to stay ahead of the puddle. So when that happens, if it's too bad, you need to turn it down. Now, everybody thinks you need to weld so hot, you can't hold it up there. And you can when you get better. But right now, if it's a real problem, turn it down just a little bit so where it'll stay. And make these, these steps, just these little... Little, keep it tight on the side. You're gonna to have to keep it tight. You're 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 just you're trying to keep it tight and flat. And when you get on the bottom, when you get on the bottom, about right here, dead man's cover. Everybody has a problem. You're gonna to have to start stepping it, a little bit longer steps. Okay, not too long. Just trying, just kind of massaging it in there. And when you get on the bottom, about right here. You're gonna to have to start stepping away to let it cool and then kind of stack. Step away, stack. So I'll do it from this side. So when you're up under this pot, you're stepping. First off, get a jack stand right here. Get a jack, something that you can be comfortable on. And you're gonna stack Get away, stack. You're, you're making these long stacking motions. And do not stop right on the bottom. Go past the bottom. You're not trying to fill it up right now. The bottom is going to be thinner than the sides and the top because you're going to put too much in it and it's going to fall out and you're going to blow a hole in it and then it's just not good. So get kind of thin on the bottom. Just do something to get something flat in there that's not knotty and go all the way real fast on this side. Boop, 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 boop. You're kind of stepping out. Boop, 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 boop. So your hot pass should go about right here. And then when you come around the other side, you can do the same thing, and when you get on the bottom, boop, 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 boop. That way the, the bottom is as flush as the sides and the top, trying to keep everything symmetrical and keeping from blowing out on the bottom. Okay? Now, you got your hot pass in. Miracle. And now we're going to put a filler in it, okay? So, <clears throat> I see this all the time. Listen, I see it all the time with people that have been welding forever. They fill it up too much. Don't fill it up too much. Do not blow those bevels off. If you blow that line right there and you fill it up too much and it spills over because you're running too hot and your, your, your bevel's that wide now, you've got to make a cap twice as big as it should be. Remember, weld small. Just try to remember that. So, our hot pass is below flush, just a little bit, where I can see my lines real good. And then I'm gonna turn it down, because everybody tries to weld too, weld too hot, and I'm gonna put a big, nice, fat, tall cap on it. Probably not real fat, because I left it low. But since you left it low, it's gonna look not all humpy. When you see these big old hump welds, that's just a way, just more room for error. Try to keep everything tight and, and precise. And it's pretty much the same thing. You're going you're gonna to have to step it on the top. And on the sides, you can kind of go, you can kind of go side to side like that to try to hold it up there. Um, it, it, you can do like this. You can do like this. You, you just try one way for a little while and then try it another way. Whatever works, it's whatever you gotta do to keep it up there. Welding machines run different. You know, some pe everybody does something different, but I'm just trying to tell you some of the things I do. So you're capping it, you're stepping it up there, you're doing use, you're doing over, whatever you gotta do to get around the bottom and the same thing on the bottom. When you get right here, you're gonna have to, this is hard to do, you're going to have to step it. You're going to make these long steps. Long. Whew, whew, just kind of stacking it back there. 
and you're not going to stop here. You're going to go on past it. You're going to kind of step it on past, and then you come around the other side, you're going to step it on past again. And the two together will make the bottom look really good. Hey, two things. Put hashtag the fringe in the comments if you've made it this far. That way I'll know who made it and who didn't. And if you're going ahead and you're beating and filling, and uh, beating hot passing and filling, go ahead and put a cap on it. Go ahead and get all the use out of that time that you spent putting that pipe together because that's part of it. Learning how to cap over some knots and stuff, you'll know it'll help you know what you can get away with and what you can't. Let's keep going. So, send me some pictures. I'll help you any way I can. I hope y'all have an awesome, awesome day. Later.